Hey guys, uh, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number three on Rhino Python. Um, today we're going to see repetition and different kinds of loops that we can use here in Python. Um, so I have already opened the Rhino Python editor. So we're going to start by importing uh, import sorry um, Rhino script syntax right there as RS as usual. Um, and we're gonna uh, do a. We're gonna start with a for loop, right? What is a for loop? A for loop is a is a structure that allows us for repeat um, things many times. So we're gonna see how it's written, and then we're gonna just um, explain what is in there, right? So we're gonna say for i, the variable i would be defined in the for loop in range, and range. It's a quite an interesting function in belt in Python, so we're going to see what that means. And we're going to say 0, 100, right? And we're going to put uh, two points here. So this will allow to build everything that we do inside the for loop would be uh, repeated a hundred times in this case. Um, notice that we are using indentation as specifying what is happening inside the for loop. We could specify anything here, and then eventually, if we continue without that indentation, we will be outside the for loop. So that's the way in which Python actually recognizes what is happening inside the for loop. So there's no parentheses that will determine that. Um, let's do something very simple, like rs dot add point, right? And we're gonna do a point. Um, so let's specify uh, the position of a point. You could say 0, 0, 0. Um, the problem with this line is that we will actually do a point, like 100 points in the same position, right? So how can we actually make points in different positions? We're going to use the variable i to just uh, make a point in the position that um, we are generating with this new variable i in the, in, the loop, in the loop, right? So let's run that and see if this is working. Right. So you can see now that we've generated 100 points and each one of them is one unit apart from the next one. Right? That's pretty good. And I'm going to go back, back to the Python editor. Um, and I want to explain a little bit of, of, of what is this function range here. Let's do something called my list equals range uh, from 0 to 8 right? and then we're going to say something like print my list we're going to just for this just by typing this hash um, symbol we can comment out this line so this won't happen but what we're doing here is just printing the variable my list that is a variable generated out of this range. So let's see what, what that gives us. Oh, we've got an error here saying unexpected indentation. Let's remove this. Right. So what we've got here is the following range is generating a list. We can see that by the uh, square brackets between 0 and 8. So it starts in 0 and it's before 8. So it doesn't include 8. So it's 8 elements as total, right? Uh, so this is a very neat function to actually uh, produce a list. So what we are doing in the for loop is just going from each element in this list generated in this range function, right? So that's quite important to understand. Um, let's do something else, like range allows us to do something like, for instance, 2, meaning this is the beginning of the list, this is the end of the list, without being included, of course, and this is a step. So we'll see that we will, in this case, we are jumping. So we're jumping every, uh, the number 1 it's omitted, number 2 it's included, number 3 is omitted, 4 included, and so forth. Right. So this is a step for the range. Uh, this is a same structure that we could use in the range inside a for loop, right? So that's the understanding of what range is actually doing. Um, so I'm going to remove that uh, just 
to make clear of what the range function is doing. So let's go back to our for loop. And we do a, could do a little bit, something a little bit more exciting here. Uh, what if we want to just do something like uh, some undulation, maybe some sine wave? Well, we can, we cannot really put something like sine wave of i right away because we would get an error, right? There's no module uh, sign. So there's a few things that we could do. We could say mm, import math as m, for instance, and we would be able to access sine wave by typing m dot and the module, right? Sign. That would work. But often you want to be able to access those math methods uh, without having to call the m for math, right? So you could say from math import and this will import all the methods from the math library uh, so you won't need to specify this m now to make this work. So let's see that. Right. So we're generating something that undulates like or uh, it's an oscillator between this point and this point, right? Um, but obviously it doesn't become too interesting. Let's put i here as well in y and see what happens. Great. So what we generated now it's a sine wave function uh, for describing the position of the points and we can see that the, I, uh, the m points are moving in the y direction while in x they are oscillating with the sine wave, right? So fairly straightforward, we start seeing how to incorporate some of these math functions in order to kind of um, build sequences. The second kind of for loop I want to show today, uh, it's a for loop that uh, it's slightly different. So let's, um, it's the while loop, right? So we're going to just comment this out. And we're gonna do a uh, while loop. For the, the while loop, uh, will actually do exactly the same thing, but uh, it's written in a different way. So we're gonna say first of all, i equals zero. So we start specifying what i is. Second, it's while i smaller than a hundred and dots, right? Um, we specify the same function. In this case, I'm gonna just copy the uh, method at point the same the same thing if we run this now this function would run forever so don't right we need to specify one more thing we need to specify how i is updated we're going to say i is plus equals one what does plus equals mean this means like whatever i is add one to it so the first time around, i will be 0, and we will generate a point in 0. Then we will get to this line, and i will become 1. And we will keep increasing i, and we will keep repeating this function while i is smaller than 100. So this is like already like something that we will see in the next tutorial, that it's a conditional statement. It's kind of evaluating a condition. And if this condition is true, we are actually executing this bit of code. So that's, uh, we're going to see if this works. Well, we should have got rid of these points first, right? So let's look at it now. So it works exactly the same. It's doing exactly the same operation than the for loop, right? Um, so these are the two main ways in which you will be doing repetition. Uh, I recommend I, I, I'm more more used to using for loops because they're more described in a way of, of what is the n number of, of steps that it will have. The while loop, uh, it's quite interesting because it's more behavioral. You could have stuff going on and, and, and repeating it, but in a way it's more dangerous as well because you could actually run into eternal loops and, and, and produce crash, um, crash your computer or crash the program, right? So. It's your choice. Uh, both are mm, very interesting. You could just decide what to use. And in the next tutorial, as I mentioned, um, we're going to see how to do if statements.